first animal I'm going to draw is a mountain goat. So, um, as you draw out, you're going to do the major shapes. So, first, there's a hole like that. The attachment hole that goes up. And then the other side where the whole note is sharp. Then the next shape is the face of the horn. And then the other shape of the horn which goes up to the face. And then the neck of the horn like a trapezium then the next shape is the parallel glam parallel glam gram then next it's the body which is almost like a rectangle shape So let's do the final details. This is how I store my wood eraser so that it doesn't come too hard. Let's lighten the sketch. continue drawing so first we'll draw the left horn goes down then the part is covered by the face then it forms like a triangle then it goes up So I'm not going to put too much detail because it's going to make the sketch too detailed which I don't want. So this one goes down and this is a part of the one that is covered by the shadow of the face. So continue. Here down is straight. So mostly what I'm doing is blocking the major face sh shapes of the faces. So the next part is let's try and draw the mouth. So on this side of the horn is goes up a slightly bit to show at least the horn is slightly curved this the eye socket is there then it comes to the nose so the nose is almost like two triangle rectangles that are joined together and due to perspective, uh, perspective one side slightly goes down and the mouth is there then you draw a simple mouth join the other nose to the part of the mouth and then you put the jaw in and you go up so as you see the way I'm drawing doesn't have to be so perfect it's an animal so you're going to barely see the difference because you, you're not so familiar with that animal so it's just easier if you just block the shapes and also you block the shaded parts 
so on the right side of the the face is the horn goes down this side is curved covered by the horn then you sh make sure that the eye is at the same level draw the eye which is look almost looking at your direction and then you put a small glimmer because this place is lighter so let's just block it out then it has sort of a um, neck fat so it goes like that then you put the neck and then slightly the neck goes down onto this side and then i put almost the shoulders and then the leg i'm not going to do the whole animal just the image the head and then the neck and part of the shoulders then also now the back side so we're going to end our image on the side so let's focus on the next one the next one is it goes round see i'm just doing it roughly inside of the horn becomes bigger bigger until it joins so this next look a bit wobbly so let's just do it again then because the light is coming from the right so we're going to the one has a shade on the face so that's what we're going to be doing next so just going to be drawing lines for the shade and then now we enhance the features so to make it a horn we need to at least put some circles to show that it's a horn Then here, this is an indenture showing that it's a horn and also it's curved. Put some of them slightly so it goes up and ends around there. And the other part of the horn attaches to the head. So the nose is shaded. This side of the whole face is shaded. So let's do that. show that it's a curve will end the shadow on that side this neck looks a bit disconnected from the body so let's try and correct that because it has a thick necklace give it the thick neck then some shading then also a bit smear with the finger to show some perspective and then enhance the, the right horn which is pretty big as you can see, I'm just roughly estimating because it's an animal, not so many people are familiar with it, so you can get away with a lot. So let's put some shading in to show that the side is inside. Then some lines to show that it finished and then put some small glimmer of the good 
to show that it's the horn that is making the shade the shadow sorry see I'm at just adjusting as you go on and on and on so the thing with drawing animals is just you adjust as you go the next one will be a bunny I like I like usually like to go from hard to simple so at least he doesn't discourage you so we'll just first do the ears so what I'm thinking as I'm doing this is just don't make it as detailed because it's not really necessary because the human brain does this trick where it's able to actually identify the animal so a lot of details are not really required that's why when you see a word as long as the first and the last word is correct then the brain is able to actually read the word so the eye slightly here Mm, it's a little bit glassy black so i'm actually using a don't know if you can see it a hb pencil which is a fiber castell one it is a gift so the next one is um actually finishing the ear to show it is where it ends I know it doesn't look like a rabbit yet. So the air is there. Ah, I didn't even notice it was out of camera. So go straight down, then a diagonal, and then the part of the mouth. In the neck I know I'm so discouraged it's not coming out as I want so the small nose it looks like it's inside the mouth so it's overlapping the mouth and then the small mouth then the whiskers It has an expression. I'm angry. How can you trust me like this? And I'm so cute. But right now, I'm showing you. Sorry, bunny. Forgive me, bunny. And the head of the bunny. Because of sh sh for shortening this ear, should be at least smaller. So, like, just make it a bit smaller. And the bit of the eye. Then at least to show that it's the far side, at least I'll color that side of the face. Then the inside of the neck because it's far away from the light. And this usually shadow this near the ears then to show it some depth so let's just put some confirm our lines building some line chart so to the eye we darken it then that's it my bunny looks weird i know I'm Try and fix it but well, we'll just come back and do 
another bunny because you don't want to keep on doing the same thing over and over again. I know you most probably don't see the difference, but I do. It's really, really looks weird. Then we just leave it like that. The next one, we're going to draw a bird from Australia. It has a big rectangular horn. And then a big right next to it. Then the head is almost oval. Then it has the neck. So let's just draw the features. I usually try and draw as lightly as possible because it's just like a rough sketch so that when I actually erase it kind of gives me the feeling of it being a rough sketch sometimes I maintain my lines sometimes I just prefer adding on to it just like that the horn show some dimension of the horn then the eye of the bird, the inner eye, the pupil, which is a bit darker, then the shade for it to stand out and pop as the eye, a bit darker, and then the beak connects with the eye. And then the bird has some wrinkles here because of the way it is. And then the neck of the bird. So let's do the line art. Do the, I don't know if it's called a horn or what, but it's on top of the bird. The side is a bit up, so let's go. And this is a design of the bird that's just behind the neck. Then you put some shading on the bird. Turn the beak slightly. to show the difference between the piece of the bird and the beak. Smudge it a bit. Put the on a bit crooked. Confirm the bird and its beak. Like that, the side of the bird because the shadow is a bit thicker. The side of the face of the bird connects to the beak, so this one slightly and comes back down. Then the side of the beak of the horn is a bit shaded and then to see that the to show that the bag is looking from the side to at least put some bit of wrinkles that's it finished our bag next thing we're going to draw is an ape which sort of has an attitude so fast First is the part of the head that is a bit triangle. Then the eyes which are almost rectangle. And this part of the jaw 
that connect to the mouth so let's start doing the details of the ape and then the mouth mouth is actually quite big it has almost like it's smiling and then it's big nose trailed it's almost like it's angry it's breathing why how dare you photograph me without my consent the part of the nose trail and the mouth comes like that it ends there then we go on and put the jaw Is like a big bug, quite too big. So, put the jaw there, and then that becomes the face of the mouth. And then the hands of the gorilla, put some shading to show. That is actually carving. This mouth is too high, so let's put it down around here. The sign of the ape is there, perspective, side of the mouth is going down. So let's go to the intense eyes. So I picked these animals because they looked interesting, they had interesting expressions. It's like they sensed somebody was going to photograph them. So it's like they're giving the pose while looking at the photographer. The eye. I know it's quite intense. Yeah, yeah, photograph me if you dare. And stop pushing us. And it's big eyebrow. Then the other side of the baboon. What's an egg? I'm not sure it's black in color. So, I don't know. Maybe you can write in the comments what you think. Is it a baboon or an ape? It's black, so not sure. Maybe you tell me. Now, the problem of drawing it traditionally is that I don't get to flip it to actually know if. It's a bit wonky or not, but I'll just trust my eyes. And I know somebody's going to comment, it looks wonky, yes, I know it looks wonky. But I'm doing my best here, so cast me some feedback, okay? <laughs> then the serious eyebrow again comes down. And the hell of the baboon neck is there. Some shading to show the nose. The nostrils are there. So 
so let's shade a bit to show that the nose is black okay the whole animal is black but at least to accentuate it show that it is different we'll smudge it a bit I know most of you are wondering, do I have a blender? No. Why I come from those things are too expensive. And I drilled up one made of paper, but hey. My niece thought it was a toy and completely smashed it and put it in water. So all that trolling, well. Just like that, it was destroyed. So let's put some shading to show how intense this eye is. Wow, I didn't even notice that it has an eye socket, just like a human. Then a bit of the wrinkles. Then the face goes down. Then the hairy part. Part of the gorilla, I really don't want to do the details of the hair so much. But at least that it will show that it's hairy. And then there's an intense imitation here of the gorilla. It's interesting not the whole head is covered with hair, just some parts. So let's do that and then there's an intense wrinkles. And then I'll shade here to show that it's actually the inner part of the gorilla. Then here. Yeah. Let's do some other, some lots of other fires. Put big fires, small fires. Let's just show that this part is in. Also this part goes down that is the darkest part also got the mouth and the nose makes like an indentation so there is my ape all we're going to draw is a baby deer so those are the ears then the face Then the other ear, and then the neck. So let's warm up the details. inside the eye I'm actually wondering if this looks correct but we'll just hang on to it it's the ugly stage of the drawing little nose indentation and then the nose which is black 
Marco Zambrani out of space. Just leave it at that. Then the other eye. Do some shading. The ears actually look like big containers. Then from there, touch the neck. It looks more like a dog than a deer. <laughs> I estimated. I don't mean estimated the space I had, but I don't like it well. The eye socket. Like that, and then some coloring to actually show that there's some depth. And then the jaw and skin. Doesn't look like a deer? No, looks like a dog. <laughs> you cannot just say it's a dog. Well, we'll try and do it later. Then the mouth. What does it look like, really? I didn't write in the comments. I should think it looks like. So I'll just leave it as that. I know it's not one of my best drawings, but we'll just leave it at that. So this is how the final sketchbook looks like. I added some more animals. Thanks for watching. Bye.